himself, and welcome back to CCA 360. We're so happy to have you here today. Thank you, everybody at CCA 360. I appreciate the, the uh, opportunity to share, to um, embrace and be embraced, and to just, you know, be in this divine light with you guys. You know, you all are doing phenomenal work, you know. I, I've only met Sifu Lester, but I know if you're connected with him, then, you know, your roots run deep and you're uh, mm -hmm. doing profound work, not only for yourself, but for community and the like. So, you know, I give thanks and deference and appreciation to all of you in that regard. Uh, and so from that perspective, anything having to do with the body, I'm uh, a delve deep, as they say. One of the, uh, the main things, second to breath, and, and, and is uh, eating, drinking, waters, food, and then movement, of course, as you guys already know. So from the perspective of eating, given what's going on in general, um, and there's a lot of specifics now, people are concerned about uh, food safety, um, primarily being able to get food because the shelves are being bare in different places because of distribution hiccups and what have you. Some say this is by design, some say by happenstance. Either way, the bottom line is you have to be prepared for whatever. And the thing that most people are have become alien to is the fact that this is my body. So each of us have that responsibility. So from that perspective, we should have certain uh, awareness and things that we tie into in order to be able to sustain this body the breath, movement, food, water. Um, so from that perspective, I, I, I like to get into the garden and there's a lot more that um, um, happens in the garden, just I mean, more than just growing food. I like to start right from prepare, preparation into throwing seed in the ground. Because you mentioned preparing the soil. So there's a number of things that I've done. So I want to throw up a couple of pictures I got a, what it is live in person rather than you know some picture. Um, there's been a number of things that I've done in the way of preparing the soil. One of the things um, that I learned from my neighbors that um, there's this uh, this company organization or uh, entity called ChipDrop.com, and you can call, you can go online, and it's a simple interface. You go online. And it'll ask you certain questions about, you know, what it is, that, what kind of chips do you want? And, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a direct question, question scenario or an answer. So you can get set up to receive wood chips if the service is available in your area. And it links you up with arborists, i.e. Tree, cut, tree cutters, trimmers, whatever, um, who, when they take down these big trees and they chip them up and what have you, they got to have somewhere to put that stuff. And if you make yourself available, i.e. your land, they can come and drop it, you know, if they're in your proximity, drop it in your yard or on your land, whatever, wherever you ask them to put it. And it's a very succinct uh, process. And it's, it's a good thing to build a relationship with those guys because and then uh, about a month or so later, uh, he came back, uh, I got done, done, used those up and I got two more loads. And it's like 20 yards each time. And with those wood chips, you can do a lot. I've not only done stuff in the garden, I'm using it to reshape the land. You know, you have landscaping. And right now what I'm doing with them is um, also I'm creating mounds um, that will, um, that I'll use similar to a raised bed so that uh, I can grow in these mounds. And they're pretty much just wood chips. So let me ask a question why are you looking for what you're looking for? Yes. So the wood chips basically will replace soil. They will be the medium. They will they will break down and become soil. Right. And as they become soil, the uh, earthworms populate them, populate the wood chips, and the also you get good mycelium. Oh. Aaron, do you do you favor a particular wood chip from a particular tree or different well, items? The thing about that is you get whatever they have available. And it all breaks down. That's the thing. It all becomes soil. I uh, I, I I don't want any type of um, antagonists. Like uh, say, if it, if it has if a tree has been infested with poison ivy, stuff like that, and they'll let you know. 
uh, typically if that's happened. But even that, all of this stuff comes from nature, it breaks down, it turns, returns back to nature. So about how long does it take for the decom decomposition to take place? Up to a year. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, this is a mound that I just start, I, this actually, this mound here um, is the, the last part of a mound of wood chip that I had uh, that's, that's about eight months old. And uh, a guy gave me some, uh, some worm castings. He has the, uh, the red wiggler worms. So I put those worm castings on top of here. And lo and behold, it had some eggs in it. So now I have red wigglers, which eat up stuff voraciously. So what I go and do now is I just break the top of this and I'll put in my, um, my um, food matter, you know, you know, pineapple skin, uh, you know, anything, any debris coming out of the kitchen. You know, you mentioned papaya, that rotten papaya, that would go in there. And, you know, and a lot of things I put in here have seeds, so I, I don't mind the seeds growing. So that's, that's one. Um, and then I have these tomato cages. What I'm going to do, and I made these from wire myself, I'm going to take some of this, add some more soil, and also uh, some, some manure out of that. Because what I learned in this permaculture class that I took recently, the feces is, is part of the whole microbiome. You know, we have that in our gut and we have a microbiome in our gut. So it's a symbiotic relationship. You know, if um, our food intake wasn't so contaminated, and for those of us whose food intake is pretty clean and lean and has a lot of vegetation, we can, you know, farm and, and add that to, um, to the soil. And of course, you would want to have that separate from the food, from the soil that you're growing in and allow it to decompose and become, you know, quality soil um, over time, same as these wood chips. So I'm, I'm going to be adding that in there. So I'll be filling this tomato cage up with wood chips, compost, soil, um, and I'll be putting plants around the sides. So I'll, I'm, I'm going to make the turn these into plant towers. You know, the thing about gardening, it gives you so many opportunities, so many opportunities. A, a system called Hugo culture, as you yeah, can see. Yeah, as you can see, there's logs in here, not just uh, chips. So this one has been sitting for about uh, five, five months. What I did was you see the black plastic over here. I covered it with the plastic and let the, let the heat do its thing. Um, you can add different soil amenities like um, lime. Lime, uh, they call it a sweetener. It, it uh, lowers the pH. But what it also does is, is it catalyzes the whole chemical reaction that causes the, the breakdown. So you get that heat. If you ever had a compost pile, you know that inside of it, it gets pretty warm. I don't till, but um, I, just, I just throw them on top. Now, uh, with the wood chips, I just layer them on the top of the soil. And I wait for them to break down. So you have to plant beneath the wood chips. So if you're going to cover an area with wood chips um, and it's going to take them a year or more to break down, then you're going to, have, when, you, when you plant, you dig down beneath the wood chips and you plant. Mm -hmm. Due to the wood chips, they create a, a top dressing, I guess you could call it, that keeps uh, down a lot of uh, weeds. Mm -hmm. It's also good for keeping certain, a lot of insects out of there too, uh, grubs and so on, you know. Um, the only real grub that shows up for the most part is the one that is a, a that a borer, be, the, the a stag beetle that eats the wood. You know, um, I haven't had any uh, issues with any other insects other than the ones that are specific to the plant.